Sometimes you want to play something completely new that you've never heard of before, but trying to find a good free game that doesn't suck can be hard, so in this video I'm going to take a look at 5 of the best free to play first person shooters on Steam that you don't know about. I've chosen games that are all offline single player experiences so you don't have to worry about getting teabagged by a 9 year old. Where the fuck got killed by mistake? Tab suck my dick! With my concise intro to boost viewer retention rate out of the way, let's get into the first game. Here we go! Bear Party Adventures is best described as Care Bears with Guns. The game starts off with all of the bears getting kidnapped in your idyllic village, and it's up to you to rescue them. The game is a solid shooter that utilizes bunny hopping to build up speed to help you move around as you blast enemy bears. Here we go! You gain access to different weapons as you progress through the game that all feel very distinct from one another. The crossbow is a one hit kill but shoots slow and has a ton of drop from range. <laughs> the SMG kills fast but has a large spread. The shotgun is good for when you're flying all over the place and blasting people from close range. And I didn't really see the purpose of the grenade though, since it just bounces all over the place. And the last weapon you get is a rocket launcher which is good for everything as long as you don't hurt yourself. Each enemy bear has one of these weapons too, so you have to fight them accordingly. Scattered around the environment you'll find armor in the form of chocolate bars and you gain health by picking up bombs. Don't do drugs. If you're doing it, stop it. Get some help. The environments and level design are varied across the game's 5 levels, which helps to change up the feel of gameplay, even if the environments are a bit simplistic looking. I really don't have any complaints for this game, since its core is so solid and I love its Care Bears but violent and on drugs theme. The game takes about 2-3 to three hours to beat, so if you're in the mood for an absurd but precise first person shooter, Bear Party Adventure is the way to go. Hellbound Survival Mode is the standalone survival mode to the full game just called Hellbound. Being a survival mode, the goal is to last as long as possible as wave after wave of enemies attack you until you die. It's clearly inspired by games like Doom with its enemy design and frantic run and gun gameplay. There's a nice variety of weapons from assault rifles to rocket launchers to use in every kind of situation. Every round early on you gain access to a new weapon to help you out as the game starts to throw more and more enemies at you. There's only one map in the game though which is kind of a bummer since you encounter the same obstacles over and over. There are explosive plants you can shoot that do splash damage and green plants that might drop health or ammo when you break them. There's lava pits you have to avoid as well which is just another thing to keep track of as you're moving around. The enemies are really varied and new ones are added with each wave. This makes the game increasingly complex as you have to figure out which enemies to prioritize. It's a really fast paced game as you can see and trying to keep pace while slaying demons was extremely engaging. Obviously you're not going to play this game for hours on end, but for a repetitive wave based shooter, Hellbound Survival Mode is really good. Transmissions Element 120 is a Half-Life mod set in the Half-Life universe, but it's a self-contained campaign. It's a game full of mystery since you don't know who you are, where you are, or why you're there. Your only goal is to try and escape. You progress through the game by solving environmental puzzles and killing enemies. The level design seems to be on par with the Half-Life games and it was always rewarding figuring out the puzzle. This game sets itself apart from the main Half-Life games by giving you this gun called the Gravity Concussion Gun that works like a rocket jump. You can use it to boost yourself into the air as well as kill enemies with it. This weapon is immensely satisfying because of its explosive nature. Most of the puzzles and levels require you to use the gravity concussion gun in some sort of way to progress, like boosting yourself up onto an otherwise unreachable ledge for example. There's a lot of different kinds of enemies that are ripped straight from the Half-Life series, but if it's not broke don't fix it. I really liked the oppressive mood the game has with its dark underground environments and abandoned looking buildings. The only critiques I have is the ending fight and the story. You have to execute the ending sequence in the exact way the game wants you to by dropping these shipping containers on the monsters. If you mess up, you might as well reload your save since they're unkillable otherwise. 
the story never answers any of the questions the game is posing, so the ending is unsatisfactory. But the game only lasts around an hour and is otherwise well designed all the way through, so it's definitely worth playing. This is probably the most well-known game on the list, but I'm sure lots of people still don't know about it. Devolverland Expo describes itself as a first-person marketing simulator. If you didn't know, Devolver Digital is a publishing company that puts out a lot of smaller scope games like Fall Guys and Carry On in recent memory. You are given tasks as you make your way through the Expo Center. It plays as a stealth first-person shooter and you're armed with a t-shirt cannon. You have to sneak around and avoid being caught by the robots in order to watch all of the trailers and gather the optional collectibles. As you're sneaking around, you can hit the robots with your t-shirt cannon to disable them for a few seconds to give you a chance to go by. There's also some little environmental challenges you have to do in order to keep progressing through the Expo Center. You might have to slide through some lasers or do a puzzle, for example. Every room's environment matches up with the game that's being advertised there. The sci-fi environment and atmosphere design overall is really impressive visually. I'm surprised a game like this hasn't been done before because gamers want to play games, so why not make a game that advertises games? If you go in knowing the game is more of an experience with light FPS and stealth elements, then you'll have a fun time, especially since it's only an hour long. Plus, I enjoy all of Devolver Digital's games, so I liked watching the trailers of both current and upcoming games. And the last game on the list is Shrine. This is a throwback to the 90s FPS games of that era and is a modded game from the original Doom's engine. It has a campaign consisting of 16 different levels that takes around 2 hours to beat depending on your skill. Being a Doom mod of course means the game is centered around enemy design, fast movement, and a variety of weapons. <laughs> The game does a wonderful job in each of these aspects. A total of 13 enemy types are introduced as you progress through the game, so you're constantly on your toes learning how each one fights. Each fight feels different because of the combination of enemies mixed with the level design. You're constantly making fast, calculated decisions to try and come out on top. I really enjoyed the level design and various gothic-themed environments throughout the campaign. Sometimes you'd be fighting in a big open space and other times you'd be in a cramped room. The weapon variety helps to change things up as well. You start off with just a pistol and then you start to gain access to a ton of different weapons. My favorite was always the shotgun though, because what Doom player doesn't like the shotgun? The enemy types, level design, and weapons all tied together makes this game as successful as it is. It's a polished tribute to the original Doom that changes up the formula with new levels, enemies, weapons, and a fresh coat of paint. The game also has a free sequel called Shrine 2 that has more levels, weapons, and enemies, so if you're left wanting more, I'd recommend playing that one too. Those were the top 5 free first person shooters on Steam you didn't know about. Hopefully at least one of those looked like something you want to play, and let me know if you're going to get any of those games down in the comments or if there's any you think I missed. This video is actually part of a series I'm doing on this channel where I take a look at some of the best free Steam games that you don't know about. I'll have the playlist linked in the description for anyone who wants to keep up with the series. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this in the future.